Welcome back to Joe Stunner Boxing. I'm a Joe Stunner and um, this channel is new. If you are, if this, is, if this is your first video that you've watched, if you could please subscribe, I'd love it. You know, hit the like button. Any support you can offer is, it's always appreciated, truly is. Um, yeah, I wanted to talk about the uh, the Liam Smith, Anthony Fowler fight, which happened last night. Um, I, think it's an, I think it was an interesting fight, very entertaining. I actually picked Smith to win in 10 rounds. I had a bit of money on the 10th round and Smith did it in eight. Could have waited another couple of rounds and I could have had my money. A bit inconsiderate really, but, but anyway, I thought it was an interesting fight and the reason I picked Smith to win, there were two reasons. One was the obvious one about experience and the fact that Smith even though his resume isn't littered with, you know, it's not like a who's who of the division, like, like middleweight division, but but he'd been abroad and fought Canelo and he'd been a, he'd held a belt and he'd been in front of big crowds before and I just thought that was that was going to help him greatly in terms of experience. He had so much more than Fowler. The second reason is perhaps a little bit less obvious, and that's that's. That's that I, I always suspected that Fowler was pretty much a front runner. Someone who, if things were going his way, looked like a million dollars, very effective. He's got a lot of skills, Fowler. But if you could get him out of his comfort zone, put the pressure on him, the lack of experience and possibly the psychological, a perceived psychological weakness, because we all have strengths and weaknesses psychologically, they might, you know, come home to roost. And I think that's what we saw last night. Um, Fowler started brilliantly. In the first round, he cut Smith. He landed a couple of right hands in the first and the second round. That I don't think they buzzed Smith a lot, but they got his attention. At one point, Smith sort of grinned at him as if to say, yeah, OK, you got me, but I'm still here. Um, interestingly... Fowler continued in the second and third round having success, but Smith at no point panicked. He never seemed to lose his composure. It's a 12 round fight, 36 minutes of action, 36 minutes of fighting. If you've ever sparred, you'll know how difficult it is to spar a few three minute rounds. It takes it out of you. There are marathon runners who can't spar two or three rounds. You know, it's a different type of endurance. It's a different type of stamina. And I just got the feeling that even though Smith was stung, was it the fourth round, the third round? He was actually shaken quite badly in one of those rounds. He held his composure. He held his his mental shape because we hear a lot about fighters holding their physical shape and the stance and the controlling the range and all that stuff which of course is vitally important but smith held on to his his psychological shape his mental state in the fourth round is it the fourth round he came back smith came back and he started to put the heat on on fowler and cut him so suddenly it's one all in cuts and Fowler goes back to the corner. They treat the cut in the fifth round. Smith has his first real bit of success, real strong bit of success where he floors Fowler. And Fowler gets up and starts, uh, you know, doing his thing, manages to hang on. But he took a beating in that round. And that was clearly the turning point. So suddenly Fowler's gone from front running, from dominating in the first three rounds, doing everything that he practiced in the gym. Suddenly he's gone to from that to facing a crisis. And I don't want to say that he mentally unraveled, because that's not fair. The guy got up, weathered the fifth round, and lasted until the eighth round. But... I remember in the sixth and the seventh, watching the fight and thinking you can almost you can almost see what both fighters are thinking and feeling. 
because Fowler, even though he was doing a lot of decent enough work, Smith was totally composed and was putting very cultured, well-schooled, educated pressure on Fowler. Far less busy than Fowler, but very precise with his punches. Good variety. And Fowler was almost, he had those doubts in his mind. You could, you could almost see it. Well, in the eighth round, Fowler gets chinned and gets up and the referee stops the fight. And Liam Smith is the winner. Well done to Liam Smith. Thoroughly deserved win. Rode out the storm. Survived what could have been a few crises. And won. And it was an entertaining fight. Thoroughly deserved win. From Fowler's point of view, it's now up to him. What does he want to do? Does he want to learn from his mistakes? Accept the defeat? Look at the mistakes he made? Regard this as an education? And also study psychologically what he needs to do, how he can improve his flaws, mental flaws as well as, you know, as well as his physical and technical stuff. Or does he want to do what Deontay Wilder did? Or I get the impression Shannon Courtney does a bit of this. And well, I'll make excuses. Well, this happened. Oh, I wasn't great going in. You know, I had an injury. I don't know. You know, people come up with all this rubbish. A lot of fighters who lose. And they're in self-denial. Now, this is not an issue of courage. When I talk about psychology, it's not an issue of courage. Fowler's a gutsy guy with a lot of skills. It's not about courage. It's about having certain mental weaknesses, like being a front runner and needing to control your emotions when things are not going your way which can be learned. Everything can be learned. Some people have it more naturally better than others, but it can be learned, you know, and we learn it through experience. It doesn't matter what skill you have in life, what skill I have, what skill you have, what skill anyone has in life. You could have a PhD in quantum physics. At one point in your life, you knew nothing. So you have to learn. And you learn by taking, by accepting reality and taking uh, responsibility for what you did and what you need to do in the future. Fowler, I hope, will do that. And he's got a very good trainer, Shane McGuigan, who I rate very highly as a trainer. I'll give you an example of someone who did learn from his mistakes. Nigel Benn, who, whose career I followed from virtually the start right up to the finish. Uh, right up to the finish. I was a massive Benn fan. I saw I sat ringside when he was on the up when he was coming up. I saw him on undercards, and you get people in the crowd going one round, Nigel, one round, finish him in one round, because Ben was just ironing everyone out. However, he had a couple of fights where clearly his vulnerabilities and his flaws were very, very evident. And when he fought Michael Watson, Finsbury Park, nineteen eighty nine, they fought in a tent of all things. Brilliant, brilliant fight. But Watson was the Liam Smith and Ben turned out to be the Anthony Fowler. <laughs> ben started like a train. He was like the bullet train from Osaka to Tokyo. He was going at Watson, unloading and Watson stayed totally composed, covered up, precisely dissected Nigel and knocked him out in the sixth round with a jab. And I'm not going to say Ben quit. That, that's a little unkind, but he was glad to be out of there. He mistimed the count from for, after being floored from a jab. And that was that. And the first thing he did was go over to Watson and embrace him, having slagged him off relentlessly and mercilessly before the fight. Now, Ben could have capitulated mentally and psychologically. He could have said, oh, yeah, my ego's in shreds now. He could have let his confidence go through the floor and he could have, it could have destroyed him, but it didn't, because he went to America. He had a couple of, fought a couple of gatekeepers, a couple of ten round decisions. Jose Quinones was, I think, one of them. I got that right. I don't know. I can't remember the names. He fought a couple of guys, 
He won the. He beat Doug Dewitt. He fought Doug Dewitt for the for the WBO middleweight title, which was lowly regarded then. He fought that. He fought for that. Knocked out Iran Barkley in one round. That was a real shootout. <laughs> if you ain't seen that fight, go see it. And then all the way up to when he fought McClellan, and he showed a level of courage, fortitude, whatever you want to call it, that it was off the chart. So in 1989, the guy who semi quit against Michael Watson in 1989 because he just didn't know what to do. Fast forward six years to 95. And he gave one of the greatest performances any British fighter has ever given against Gerald McClellan. I know that it ended tragically, but let's not shouldn't detract from the fact that it was a, an incredible, unbelievable performance by Ben. So he's that's a perfect example of someone who took the defeat, accepted all the things he did wrong and came back. And I hope Anthony Fowler does the same thing because he's, he's a good fighter. Very, very good variety of punches, sharp, needs more experience, needs to learn when to throw which punches at what point, how to pace himself over 12. All the things that Liam Smith, you know, kind of knew already because of the experience. It's like when he went to fight Canelo abroad, uh, you know, okay, he got knocked out, body punch, went in the ninth round or something. Um, but what, what an experience to go abroad and fight Canelo and then come back here immediately. You see, defeat. You can learn from defeat. That's how we learn things. It's like a little baby trying to walk. Gets up, falls on its bum, falls on its face, starts grizzling. Bum gives it a little cuddle and then it tries to walk again. It's a bit better. You know, it's the same damn thing. So, well done to Liam Smith. Great performance. Um, he's clearly got a lot lot left in him. All the best to Anthony Fowler. Uh, yeah, anyway. That's my thought on things. So what do you think? Put your comments below in the uh, comments section. Do you agree with me? Do you not agree with me? That's fine. Either way, I ain't, I ain't fussed. You know, I'm, I'm interested to hear what you think. And uh, yeah, let's look. Let's. Uh, what's the next big fight we got coming up? I can't think offhand. Anyway, this is Joe Stunner Boxing. Um, thanks very much for tuning in. Subscribe, hit the like button, and I'll speak to you again sometime. Take care.